Well, there are two things that happen in sequence. One will be you learn that there's a data breach and you have to respond to that. And as the lawyer, we have to come in and conduct an immediate investigation as to the facts. When there's a data breach, it generally doesn't come to you wrapped in a package with a bow on top where all the information is laid out for you and all the facts have been gathered. What happens is somehow, some way, the insured becomes aware that there is a possible breach at which point you start to do an investigation. Well, at that point, you have to get the lawyers involved and help guide whether it be an investigation, whether it be a forensic investigation, et cetera. So that's, that's the first foremost thing you have to do is gather the facts and understand what it is you're dealing with and hopefully put a plug in it and stop it. Next, you have to, you have to take steps along the lines of notice. 45 states have notice laws. There are now notice laws in federal legislation. So we have to deal with various levels of notice and one size does not fit all. So that there is some real significant cost to not only legally setting up the proper notice to the proper people, but also in making sure that you don't overstep or underinclude those people who deserve notice under the statutes. So that's a whole other area of the law. Another area you have to deal with immediately, in my opinion, would be the litigation hold. When there's a significant data loss, you are on notice as an entity of likely litigation in federal court. Class actions are generally brought in federal court under the law. If you're on notice in federal court, you've got e-discovery issues, you've got to be prepared. So after you've figured out what happened and after you've plugged the hole and after you've started your notice, now you're talking about litigation holds internally, interviews, you're talking about appreciating what standards were existing within the organization and were they violated or were they not violated when the loss occurred. So there's always that to measure up against. Another problem that we see is that there, there are organizations who set up and they actually comply or they try to comply with various laws about how to protect data, how to manage data, and then they don't live up to their own laws internally and their own rules and regulations. Never looks good when you're defending a case when they knew better and they still failed. So in some ways, it's better to not know at all than it is to know too much and still fail to really follow up appropriately. Those are some of the areas of cost, and that's all before you have a lawsuit. Now, once you have a lawsuit after the breach, that's a whole other set of tasks. You, As I indicated in other comments, you may have a lawsuit that's filed in dozens of states. Well, you've got to secure local counsel. You've got to manage that into, hopefully, a multi-district litigation in federal court. That is no small undertaking. That's something that, that we have to manage from the get-go. and You have to have that in mind when you're handling a breach that has not yet turned into a significant piece of litigation. It may never, but if it does, you have to be ready for that. So there's a whole nother level there when you get into the world of litigation laying over on top of what you've already dealt with in terms of responding to the breach. There's public relations issues. There are potentially insurance coverage issues. There are DNO issues possibly. There are a lot of issues out there that you have to deal with and you've got to be prepared in the context of data security to deal with them. It's not a place you want to teach lawyers. If the lawyers aren't up to speed on at least most of the issues, it's going to be a difficult transition to just pick this stuff up. It doesn't happen quickly.